Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user Power Word Nurse. Female 26 married less than 6 months to male 25. How do I tell my in-laws I'm not okay with them moving in just yet? Let me elaborate. My life has been a little busy this year. I graduated nursing school, studied for and passed my boards, got my first registered nurse job, got married and most recently bought a house six weeks ago. It's common knowledge among family and friends that we haven't even taken our honeymoon yet because of new jobs and expenses. My husband and I are from the same hometown, but our new home is three hours away. I considered this distance to be a nice buffer so neither of our parents could meddle and husband and I could really learn to be independent in our first year or so. Husband's parents have been saying for about a year now that they want to move nearer to wherever husband lives, so I figured that meant down the road, at least six months to a year or more. Where it gets complicated is I work evenings as well as every other weekend and meeting with my husband and family is often meticulously scheduled. All summer, my in-laws have been talking to my husband about staying with us while they transition into new jobs and a new house closer to us. I stated my concerns about being an Everybody Loves Raymond family and my husband assured me that wouldn't happen. I agreed they could stay with us later and I clearly remember saying at least six months from now. Instead, my usually considerate husband gives them the okay to stay with us indefinitely or until they have a place to live. I am not okay with this. I've only spent one weekend alone in my house so far without having to work or without his parents coming over to plan their future. I swear I used to kind of like these people, but I feel that asking all this of us so soon in our marriage and home ownership is unreasonable, especially considered they only asked one half of the owners. Needless to say, this arrangement has driven a wedge between my husband and me. It's my birthday and I'm sleeping on the couch because my husband has this attitude that what's done is done, we can't change it now and voicing your opinion will only hurt their feelings. I don't want to ruin my relationship with my in-laws right off the bat by telling them how I really feel, but from my perspective, they didn't seem to care a whole lot about how their decision would affect my feelings. It doesn't help matters that I have a doormat and somewhat passive-aggressive personality. I'm awkward and I don't know how to make demands nicely. For instance, I want them out in three weeks, but start sweating at the thought of breaking the news to them. Also, how can I tell my in-laws they can't criticize me in my home? The food I cook is too spicy, I'm bad about turning lights off, they're not paying us a dime, I should like dogs more than cats, I should get on this baby making business. I'm new to this marriage thing, but how can I make my voice heard without pissing off everyone around me? How can I make my husband put my happiness above his parents? I wish I didn't resent him so much for this, but I can't stop being angry because I'm inconvenienced by this daily. Oof, OP, there is so much to talk about here, but I'm gonna try to make it as short as possible, so here's the list. 1. You need to work on your assertiveness. This doesn't mean to be rude, but to be heard and respected. 2. Your husband should understand that you come first. You are now his immediate family. If he doesn't know this, then you need to help him acknowledge this. 3. It's your and your husband's home. Your in-laws are guests. If their comments make you uncomfortable, tell them. See point 1 regarding assertiveness. And remember, being courteous doesn't take away strength in making a point. Finally, and this has nothing to do with you, but your in-laws should get a clue. They can wait for a year before having to be so close to their son. You both need to grow as a couple. I truly believe this is really important. Okay, so hopefully I touched all the important points here. So what do you guys think? What kind of opinion would you give OP? Let me know in the comments section and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Painted Lady 318 says, I understand your husband's desire to help them out, but your in-laws should not be moving in with their newly married son and his bride. Not even temporarily. Absolutely not. How horribly rude and selfish of them. They are adults and can handle their own arrangements without burdening you. If they're not moved in yet and your husband won't stick up for your wishes, you're going to have to talk to your mother-in-law yourself. Give your husband the opportunity to handle it first. We are sorry, but we're new at this marriage thing and need time to ourselves as all newlyweds do. 
we've reconsidered our offer of staying with us. They also need boundaries for when they are living closer. No showing up unannounced and we are not going to spend all our free time with you. I truly hope they're not bad people, just not considering how intrusive they are being. Put your foot down, girl, or it's going to be drama with them all your married life. Deleted says, you and your husband need to sit down and talk about this immediately. The fact that your husband is making decisions without you and you've only been married six months is a huge red flag. He got you into this mess and he needs to get you out. His parents shouldn't move from their current situation until they have jobs lined up in your new town. Although hopefully your husband can just encourage them to stay put. Has he always been like this with his parents? I don't think there's any relationship to ruin when it's clear your in-laws don't give a crap about your feelings or your husband and your relationship. Otherwise, they'd think this was a terrible idea as well. And Opie responds, We have talked and he feels bad, but his mom is living with us, has been for a week, because she has a new job already. She's been really nice and doesn't seem to expect me to hang out with her all the time. Canned Quilt says, try to stand up to your in-laws in a non-confrontational manner. When your husband's mom fusses that you need to stop leaving lights on, you could say something like, I like it bright, good thing you don't have to pay the bill. Complaints about too spicy food? I forget that not everyone likes it as spicy as we do. Want to help make dinner? The urge to be passive-aggressive will be overwhelming, but don't do it. These people are your in-laws and will be in your life, hopefully forever. You don't want to wreck the relationship. About your husband, I bet he will get to the point where he is sick of them. You two should definitely sit down and talk about the plan, limits on their stay, and then present these decisions to the in-laws together. And OP responds, I really appreciate your encouragement. He actually did reach a point tonight where he had to lay out some expectations that his parents didn't want to hear, but had to accept. You hit the nail on the head. Okay, well, the community did give OP some pretty solid advice. And I've got just one question for you guys. This last commenter, Can Quilt, urged OP not to be passive aggressive, but then all of the suggestions that they gave OP to say came across to me as passive aggressive. Was that just me or do you guys feel the same way? Let me know. Now let's move on to some more information and context before we get into the update. A few more details. My husband and I dated long distance for five years before getting married. Most days we love being around each other. My husband is usually so considerate and he feels terrible about making this decision without me. We have talked it through and we have a plan for discussing future life-changing decisions that are brought to one or both of us. What I can't seem to figure out is how to communicate honestly with his parents. I want them to like me. I have an emotionally abusive history with my dad, and the thought of sharing my controversial opinion with my husband's parents terrifies me. I need advice, and if necessary, a pep talk. This is the third time since we've been married that my husband's parents made a decision with my husband and without me that I was not in favor of. Additional information from OP's comments. As much as I think they are leeching at times, they really seem to think this is going to be short term. They think of it as their son helping them out after they helped him for 25 years. It's hard to be mad when they don't seem to think it's a problem like I do. I struggle with holding grudges, so I'm trying so hard to not think of them as the enemy, but just want them to care about what I have to say. My husband says I can't be mad at them when he gave them the impression it was okay with me if they moved in. I feel there's no way to make my feelings known at this point, and I don't think they're rude, just out of touch. It turns out that my parent had the talk that I was waiting for with his parents tonight while I was at work. My husband was able to give his parents an agreeable move-out date to aim for, and explained how the situation is unfair to me. I never wanted to kick them to the curve because I really do care about these people. They'll stay as long as they have to, but I can at least rest assured that my husband will let them know when they've overstayed their welcome. All I really wanted was for him to have my back, and now, having that, I don't want to cause more hurt feelings than what's necessary. I just want to enjoy the house I've worked my ass off for. Oh, and as far as our culture goes, we're about as Anglo-Saxon as they come. 
which in our families seems to equate with confusing misinterpretations and inconsistent social expectations. Tongue out face? Okay, I don't know about the background thing, but that part where OP says that the husband said that OP can't be mad because he gave them the impression it was okay, that part just doesn't seem right to me. Maybe it's part of their dynamic, but it still doesn't seem right to me. Regardless, let's move on with the update to see what happened two years after the original post. I cannot believe I went so long without giving an update. So sorry everyone, or at least to all 30 of you that voted on my post. It's been over two years. I'm now 28 and we've been married for two years and nine months. When I wrote this post, I was disappointed, rightfully as many pointed out, with my husband for his poor communication between his parents and myself. If you read the original, you'll remember his mom was living with us for a few months to ease the financial burden of their quitting their jobs and following us across the state. Because, you know, grandbabies, right? Wrong. Two years later and we still don't have kids. But I still believe this is our business and I'm happy to remind them of this when they openly joke about our reproductive choices, although much less frequent now. We've all spent a lot more time together and I'm much more comfortable shutting that conversation down instead of relying on my husband to do it. My husband did read my post and we laughed about all the call your lawyer divorce now comments. In the end, the husband was talking to his parents one day when his dad said, Yeah, if I don't find a job soon and our house sells, I'm going to have to move into the basement with mom and bring the dogs. I was never more proud of my husband when he said in front of all of us, That's just not going to work. We've sacrificed a lot already and that's just asking too much. In fact, we were hoping to have the house back to ourselves by Thanksgiving. His dad is not usually great with his wording and often offends people accidentally, so I expected some rude comment, but he actually understood and was not resentful in the least. Husband's parents ended up renting a house where they could take their rowdy dogs and we could live in peace. Money was tight for them during this transition, but that's what happens when you move, folks. They never offered us any money when they moved into our basement within a month of us closing on our house. They didn't seem to give pause when it was our situation, but I think their eyes were opened when they bought their first home in over 30 years. They ended up buying a house about 40 minutes north of us. I was worried about them stopping over too often, but we were placed in a fortunate, unfortunate situation. My husband didn't think this topic merited discussion, but I did. That all changed when we were having some pretty great sex one Saturday afternoon and his parents knocked on our door. We were going to finish quickly and then get the door, but the doorknob was rattling and the knocking grew louder. It was the in-laws and they were concerned because why would we not answer our door when the car was in the driveway? Did you not want grandbabies? Because this is how to not get grandbabies. One of the first things out of my husband's mouth was, we really need you to call before you guys stop by. Never been an issue again. We still own our house and are constantly making improvements on it. My husband and I are both happily employed and love our careers, though they still keep us busy. We did have the house to ourselves, but after a year we wanted to make more progress on our student loans, so we drew up a contract and began renting our basement to a friend for 13 months now. Life's pretty great. In other news, we all just took a family vacation last month. A seven night cruise with my parents and his. It was great because we had just enough time alone to make it fun and relaxing and plenty of time to make the parents all happy and we all had a great time. I am so glad things are looking up and we're all learning how to respect each other more all the time. Alright, well, communication and growth. This was a great update. Thank you, OP, so much for sharing. Now, just in case you're wondering, there was another post that has nothing to do with this story that was 10 months after this last update where OP shares that she's 12 weeks pregnant. So congratulations, OP, on your family. And now, let's move on to the next post. This post is from the subreddit Petty Revenge, and it's by user Darking Knight, the Karen with the left-handed bag. I was working at a Tim Hortons in my youth, think 19, 20 year old, and I prided myself on polite and courteous service. I was always cheerful and tried my best to fill orders promptly. 
I managed this by telling myself that even the worst customer could just be a normal person on the most terrible day of their life. I usually brightened people's days and saw many grumpy people leave happier because of me. Until the Karen came in. I was dealing with a lunch rush, which means for several hours people stream in as if food and drink had never existed and will never exist again. So there were a lot of people to get through. A lot. So under these conditions, the Karen showed herself. She was belligerent, rude, and had a truly massive order to fill. Nothing I couldn't handle, however she had several drinks ordered, think 8 different beverages, and she had 3 dozen donuts. This is fine, nothing out of the ordinary, but she had to have them specifically in a certain order in the boxes and this took time as she ordered me about. No problem, I've dealt with weirder things while working here. The line however was backing up while I was serving her and her true colors were starting to show as I filled her order. Then we get to check out. I start to ring her up. She changes her order, third time, again, and wants to add four sandwiches. I say, ma'am, could we ring the drink and donuts through first? Until I ring you through completely, it ties up a cash register. The Karen screeches, I won't pay more taxes on my order, you won't cheat me. I stare rather dumbfounded at this logic. I tried to argue with her saying, ma'am, this isn't going to increase your taxes, it's just faster. The Karen interrupts, no, I won't be cheated, you hear me? And I shoot a deeply apologetic glance at my co-workers who are now, regretfully, dealing with a crowd with one less cash register. Then proceed to head to the deli to make her sandwiches, as fast as I physically can so I can get back to the counter. The Karen smugly chides and reproaches me while I make her order telling me, you're making the sandwich wrong and try several times to order me about as if I were a complete idiot. As I'm finishing my second sandwich for this woman, I'm getting irritated with her attitude. I, still politely, inform her that I have to assemble the sandwiches in a certain order. I even have a physical chart to follow. I could get fired for not following the chart. She harumphs at me while muttering under her breath about how no one respects their elders anymore and F you and more angrily bitch when I'm beginning the fourth sandwich. My sunny disposition was leaving me at this point. This woman obviously had no respect for me, thinks I'm an incompetent and doesn't care if she insults me. So impulsively, I came up with a plan as I finished up the fourth and final sandwich. Smacking my head I say, oh I almost forgot. The Karen grumbles, forgot what? I say, well, we have a new promotional offer and I almost forgot to ask you about it. You see, Tim Hortons has been doing ergonomic studies and has found that right-handed people and left-handed people hold bags differently. The Karen looked interested, so I continued. So with these findings, they designed ergonomic bags for their customers as a promotional offer. Would you like to participate? The Karen huffed at me, of course I want to participate. I give my best customer service smile and say, okay, would you like a left-handed bag or a right-handed bag? The Karen looks offended, a right-handed one of course. I say, of course ma'am, and duck down below the counter to quietly rummage through the completely identical bags I have. I decide to take the whole thing a step further and pop back up with a look of pure regret on my face. I'm so sorry ma'am, we only have left-handed bags left, is that okay? The Karen is upset with this turn of events, but does not wish to lose out on the promotion. Ugh, fine. She says icily and grabs her order. I ring her through and watch her walk out the door with complete satisfaction in my soul. The added cherry? I heard her complaining about her left-handed bag to her friend as she walked out with her order and the confused look on the friend's face was priceless as this woman bitched and moaned about this completely made up problem. I have never done anything like this before or since. She was a special kind of a-hole. The Karen with the left-handed bag. Ah, oh, OP, this was beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. You got one over a big a-hole, Karen. And it's that time that we've reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I really did enjoy reading them to you. So if you did, then don't be shy and go ahead and give the video a like. 
And don't forget to subscribe or even share this video with people that you might think will enjoy my storytelling. Also, if you have the time, go down to the video description and check out all the links I have for you, from our Discord community to my channel merch. And finally, I'd like to say thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me that you enjoy my videos. And having said all that, I'll see you guys in the next video.